Now, by determining individual elements' oxidation numbers, we can figure out what elements get oxidized, that is, lose electrons, and what elements get reduced, that is, gain electrons, in a redox reaction. I'll show you how. To determine which elements are oxidized and which ones are reduced in a redox reaction, we have to go through the following steps. One, figure out the oxidation number of every element in the chemical reaction. Two, any elements whose oxidation numbers become more positive going from left to right have lost electrons and are therefore oxidized. Three, any elements whose oxidation numbers have become more negative going from left to right have gained electrons and therefore have gotten reduced. Now, parenthetically, I want you to know something more. Elements that get oxidized in redox reactions are called reducing agents or reductants. Elements that get reduced in a redox reaction are called oxidizing agents or oxidants. Which brings us to some excellent examples. Which element gets oxidized and which one gets reduced in the following reactions? In my typical style, I won't show you the answer to every one of these, but we'll do one and let you attempt the rest on your own. Here's our equation. As I did earlier, I like to write two rows beneath the overall chemical reaction, one for individual charge and one for total charge. I'm now going to use the rules of oxidation state to assign an individual oxidation number to every single element in this chemical equation. Magnesium, you'll note, has no charge and it's not bonded to anything other than magnesium. Hence, its oxidation number is zero. Over here, you'll notice that hydrogen is bonded to oxygen. As we discussed in an earlier slide, hydrogen's oxidation number, when it's bonded to a non-metal, is almost always plus one. And indeed, that is still the case here. Oxygen's, according to our earlier convention, is still negative two. Now, let's look at the product side. Because magnesium is located in column two of the periodic table, you'll note that when it becomes an ion, it's going to want to have a charge of plus two. That is, it's going to want to lose two electrons to move effectively to the left two columns from where it resides in the periodic table so that it can feel like it's nearest neighboring noble gas. As we've seen in our earlier convention, oxygen's oxidation state remains negative two and hydrogen's oxidation state remains plus one. You'll note that this makes sense because this ion, OH minus, is hydroxide. You'll remember that I asked you earlier to memorize that hydroxide, OH, has an overall charge of negative one. It makes sense that if oxygen has an overall oxidation state or charge of negative two and hydrogen of plus one, you add those together, each OH has an overall charge of minus one. Indeed, if there are two of them, we have an overall minus charge of minus two, which counterbalances the positive two charge in the magnesium. That brings us to our last product, H2 gas. This is a hydrogen atom stuck to another hydrogen atom. No charge in that molecule, and hydrogen is only bonded to other atoms of itself. Thus, its oxidation state is zero. Now we come up with a line for total charge. Magnesium's oxidation state is zero and remains the same. Each of these hydrogen atoms has an overall oxidation state of plus one. Now in every molecule of water, you'll note there are two hydrogen atoms, thus the overall positive charge for them combined is plus two. Oxygen, being all by itself in a single molecule of water, still has a charge of minus two, thus we see that these two charges balance each other out. Magnesium's charge remains the same at plus two. This subscript indicates that there are two total oxygen atoms in each molecule of magnesium hydroxide. Each of them has a charge of negative two, thus the overall negative charge for the oxygen category in this molecule is minus four. Each hydrogen atom has an overall oxidation state of plus one. Because there are two of them, the overall state is plus two. You'll notice that if we add all of these together, their overall charge is zero for the molecule, which indeed is the case. Hydrogen, being as boring as it is by itself, keeps a total charge of zero. Now we get to our question. Who has been oxidized and who has been reduced in this process? You'll see that magnesium becomes more positive going from left to right. On the left side of the equation, his oxidation state is zero. On the right side, it's plus two. Now, because it becomes more positive going left to right, it lost electrons and is therefore oxidized. Remember, 
Leo the lion says Gur. Losing electrons is oxidation. Hydrogen, in contrast, became more negative going left to right. On the left side of the equation, hydrogen's oxidation state was plus one. On the right side of the equation, it was zero. That is actually becoming more negative. That means that hydrogen gained electrons in this process going from the left side of the equation to the right side, and therefore became reduced. Gaining electrons is reduction. Let's do another example, this one shown here. As in the previous example, we're going to analyze each of these elements one at a time, going from left to right. I'm going to start with carbon. Now you'll note from our earlier precedent discussing elements that there isn't an obvious precedent for carbon's oxidation state. Thus, I'm going to write question mark next to its individual charge. With our previous convention in mind, you'll note that these hydrogen atoms are all bonded to nonmetals. Thus, their oxidation states will continue at plus one. Oxygens remains negative two by similar convention, and hydrogens over here is also plus one. Let's pause momentarily and see if we can figure out what carbon's oxidation state is. If we take into account the fact that there are three hydrogen atoms here, and each one has a state of plus one, we can see that the overall charge of hydrogen here is plus three. Oxygen has an oxidation state of negative two, and there's only one of it, so it's state remains at negative two, and hydrogen over here remains at plus one. Carbon's oxidation number has to be a number that when added with positive three, minus two, and positive one gives an overall sum of zero. What number does that turn out to be? Of course it turns out to be negative two. That now brings us to O2. This is elemental oxygen. Oxygen that has no charge and is only bonded to other oxygen atoms. What is its oxidation state? Of course, it is zero. Its overall charge, intuitively, also is zero. Let's look at our products now. I've got carbon here, whose charge is probably not obvious. Therefore, I'm going to write question mark. Hydrogen, by previous convention, gets an oxidation number of plus one, and oxygen an oxidation number of negative two. Let's take a closer look at this molecule. Because I have two hydrogens that each have an overall charge of plus one, the total positive charge for those hydrogens combined is plus two. Oxygen is all by itself, so it retains a charge of minus two. What in the world does carbon's oxidation state have to be in order to combine with plus two and minus two to give an overall charge of zero? The answer is zero. Let's look at this molecule over here, water. By previous convention, our hydrogens each get an oxidation number of plus one, and oxygen of minus two. Because there are two hydrogens, each having an oxidation number of plus one, their overall positive charge combined is plus two, and that of oxygen is minus two. We now return to our original question. What got oxidized and what got reduced in this process? As you'll note, carbon going from the left side of the equation to the right side of the equation became more positive. Its oxidation number over here on the left was negative two, and on the right was zero. Because it became more positive, that means it lost electrons in this process and was therefore oxidized. In contrast, oxygen became more negative going from left to right. On the left side of the equation, its oxidation number was zero, and on the right, it was negative two. Oxygen, therefore, gained electrons in this process and got reduced. Now, one thing I hasten to mention is this. Because this molecule, CH3OH, which is known as methanol, is the molecule that contains the atom, carbon, which got oxidized, we would call methanol in this process the reductant. The reason is because it was oxidized itself in the process of transferring electrons to the oxygen to reduce that element. Because methanol reduced the O2, it is the reductant. In contrast, O2 is the molecule that stole electrons from methanol to become itself reduced. Because of that, we call O2 the oxidant. Now this brings us to the end of this discussion of redox reactions. Please join me for our next discussion, which will be available soon, in which we'll talk further about Chapter 4's coverage of reactions in aqueous solution. Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.